It's no secret that a lot of little kids try to act like adults or do grown-up things before they're of age, whether it's using a fake ID to purchase age-restricted substances or just lying about your age so that you can play an online violent video game. But one of the most common things that I'm seeing these days with kids trying to bypass age restrictions is them signing up for social media accounts, especially on Meta's platform. Now, Meta actually has a rule all across their social media sites, from Facebook to Threads, that a user must be at least 13 years old to have a profile there. So that's still technically a kid, but it's hopefully old enough for them to not be so naive and know about stranger danger and the risks of them giving out their online or their personal information online. But despite these rules and Meta's supposed enforcement, there's still millions of underage profiles, and when I say underage, we're meaning under 13, on Instagram and on Facebook. Now, this is something that I actually knew a little bit about before I started the research for this video, and I knew this from watching predator catching content on YouTube, because many of those decoys who are posing as underage kids and chatting up these predators are doing so on sites like Facebook and Instagram. And on the gram, you can actually see all the other accounts that people follow, which, you know, this is something that the decoys really take advantage of. If they're chatting up some old dude and they see he's following a whole bunch of little girls, then there's a much higher chance that he's gonna try to come over and get skeeted in 4K. Now, of course, that kind of evidence and observation is just anecdotal at best, but now we actually have unredacted court documents showing that Meta was not only aware that there was a large number of under 13-year-old profiles on their platforms, but they actually coveted and actively pursued this underage demographic despite Meta's own terms of service. Uh, so if you scroll down a bit, this is a chart that was created internally at Meta. So, you know, this is public now because of the courts and discovery and stuff like that. Um, but this chart was likely shown at meetings with top brass at Meta, top executives, and it's showing monthly active people penetration. Okay, so that's what MAP stands for in this case for different age groups. Now, keep in mind, this chart here is from 2016, okay? So keep that in mind when we're looking at the year of birth here in the graph's key. So this clearly shows that Meta wanted to penetrate into these demographics of, let's see, I guess be, these would be 12 year olds, for profit, just as they do with every other age demographic and race and gender and everything else like that on the platform. But things get even worse. So another related chart here, again, an internal chart from Meta that was shown to their top brass, shows that in 2016, approximately 20% of people born in 2004 we're using Instagram on a daily basis. And another thing that I find very disturbing by this chart is that you can see how addictive the platform becomes for people that are using it at younger ages. So if we follow the trend of this chart here, back in 2015, when these users would have been 11 years old, you know, people born in 2004, uh, only about 10% of them were daily active users on Instagram. But of course, that doubled uh, to 20% when they turned 12 in 2016. And then it doubled again to 40% by the time that they were actually old enough to use the platform, at least old enough according to Meta's definition, you know, their own terms of service. And, you know, this kind of stuff does not happen by accident. In fact, I would state confidently that Meta knows exactly what they're doing by getting users hooked on the platform, hooked on social media in general when they're kids, because this is the same exact kind of marketing techniques that cigarette companies were using back in the day. Okay, so Big Tobacco, they knew that addiction to their products was going to be strongest if 
people were trying them, you know, cigarettes and dip and stuff like that, but, you know, mainly cigarettes, uh, when they were children. And here we're seeing the exact same effects with social media. The people that are getting hooked on this the most are the people that are using it before they're even teenagers. And if we scroll down a bit more, we can see that it's not just, you know, happenstance, okay, that a bunch of young kids started using uh, the platform. We also have some screenshots from ads that Meta ran. So this one right here uh, is a screenshot from a television commercial for Instagram that aired in April of 2023. Uh, and then this one is actually pretty easy to find um, on YouTube uh, that they had in October of 2021. So both of these uh, commercials, you know, both of these screenshots, they appear to be showing, well, they're definitely showing children, but the age is a little bit ambiguous, right? They could very easily be younger than what is allowed on Meta's platform according to their very own terms of service. And with this one in particular, I'm actually going to show uh, some footage of this commercial because I was able to track it down. Um, you know, I find it really ironic how in this commercial featuring the young hockey player, it's showcasing parental controls on Instagram. Like, yeah, you can see everything your everything your kid does on Instagram. You can see everyone they interact with and you can see how much time they spend on it. Oh, parents, it's nothing to worry about. Let your kids sign up to Instagram. Let us track everything they're doing and scrape their data and let us use targeted advertising against them. But again, we can infer from the data on the charts and just from our own common sense that most parents are not actually going to use these parental controls in Instagram or anywhere else on the kids' devices. Uh, in fact, I would be surprised if most parents out there with teenage or younger children are even aware of what social media accounts their kids have in the first place or like even aware of what apps they have on their phone. And uh, honestly, I think better parenting is really the only solution to this problem. I realize that there's deeper societal issues at play here, like single parent households or households where both parents work and so it's harder for them to watch their children this closely. But please, don't fall into this naivete that corporations are going to police themselves or that the US government is gonna fix it, okay? Don't believe just because we have this court document where 30-something states are suing Meta because they're not protecting the children that anything here is going to change. Okay, big tech and big government are in bed with each other. And personally, I don't even think it's a good idea for anyone who isn't a business owner and promoting their business to even be active daily on social media in the first place because of the risk of the scrolling addiction and the general exposure to toxic content, okay? I mean, we can see again uh, from the charts that it's not just kids that are getting addicted, that are on Instagram every single day, it's also people who are in their 20s. And when you look at how many predators are on these platforms that are run by Meta and how many CP traders are on there, blatantly advertising like they'll literally show clothed images of kids that are known to the national center for missing and exploited children and then they'll like write in the description or whatever telling you to hit them up on telegram or some other encrypted platform to buy pictures and how meta just not only doesn't do anything about this but they actually feed predators more of these underage profiles and more of these CP trading profiles with their algorithm, just like any other kind of content, when you realize that this is what's happening on these sites, I just can't imagine why any parent would still want their son or daughter using the same platform.